Welcome to my channel. Today we will see how to prepare the student management system using Excel VBA. First I will open an Excel file. We will save this Excel file as macro enabled workbook. Student management system. The saving file type as Excel macro enabled workbook. If you don't get the developer tab here from the file menu in the option from the customized ribbon if you don't tick the developer here you can tick and click the ok button you will get the developer tab here from the developer menu in the left side under the code group click the visual basic or else the shortcut is the old f11 Here our VBA project student management system is here. Right click that project and we can insert user form. In the properties, double click the name and you can rename the user form. FRM student management system. Enter. Also in the caption, you can give your company name or the uh, university name. We will give a back color. We will set the sky to 620 and width 1150. Okay, now we can run this user form by clicking this button or else the shortcut is a 5 function key. Now we will run this. The user form fits with our screen. Right, we will close this. If you don't get the toolbox here, from the view menu, you can get the toolbox from here. From the toolbox, I will take a multi page here and I will apply here. Go all over the user form. Okay, there are two pages page one and page two. Select the page one. Uh, the name will be page one in the caption. We can change this to student details. Jump to the page two. Name will be as page two. We can change the caption as university database. Page one, page two. We will run this and check it out. You can see university details page two. Student details is the page one. Now we will select the page one student details. From the toolbox, we will take a frame for the frame name, it will be frame one. For the frame caption, we will make this empty and the height 265 with 430. We will copy this frame here. This is frame two. We will set this height 300 and the width as 430. Now we will copy one more frame here. This is frame 3. For this frame, the height is 240 and the width is 230. Now here we will copy this frame. Also we will copy this this frame is frame number four and we will copy this frame at here, right? This is frame number five. We'll copy this frame here. This is frame number six. Also, we will take another frame from the toolbox. This is frame number seven. We will make the caption empty. Also, we will copy one more frame inside this frame this is top of the frame number five this is frame number eight now we got the all frames in the top of the ph1 now we will run this and check it out i will close this now we will take a label here label one from the font we can increase the font size bold and 16 
we will copy this label and we will take a text box here and we will change this font size 14 now we can rename this label lbl is the prefix student id enter in the caption we can give student id also in the text box we can name this as txt is the prefix for the text box txt student id likewise we can name the other labels and text boxes now i will copy this text box for the fifth one i will take a compo box here last two are text boxes for the combo box i will name this as cbo cbo is the prefix cbo gender here in the properties from the text the combo box will be default as make the selection and we can increase the font size here 16 select this label and text box press ctrl and drag it down to the frame number 4 here we need 8 text box we will copy the label to the frame number 2 here we need 9 labels we will copy this combo box here and we need text boxes here we'll copy them now we will move down here to the frame number five you can see here this is frame number five top of that frame number seven is there here we will copy this five labels and to this frame and we will take a combo box we will resize this the properties from the text it will be default as no in the drop down we are going to put yes and no so we will copy this to the all five in the frame number eight we will take the command button from here for the command button we can rename this cmd cmd is the prefix cmd add new in the caption we can type add new from the font we can change the font bold 20 now we will copy this command button totally we need seven command buttons now we will take a label here we will top and bottom caption empty back color a dark blue color we will copy this label here in the frame number three we will take a combo box we will copy this we will copy one more time in this frame we are going to get the calendar here we will get the month here we will get the current year and the month in these two combo boxes to get the calendar we will get command button here we will make this command button as d1 and the caption as empty also here we will take a label here we will copy this label six more times in this labels here we will write that big days sunday monday tuesday to saturday here we need 42 command buttons for the days seven columns and six rows so we will copy this okay seven columns and six rows From the frame number six here here we will get the result here we will copy this label here okay. 
we are going to take eight combo boxes for eight different subjects so here will it will be number so here it will be numbers from one to eight okay i will align this later now here i will take the combo box for the subjects subject number one two three four five six seven eight totally eight subjects here we will take text boxes for the result of this each subject which we are selecting from the combo box for the subject result will be we will type here now we got everything in the use of home we can run this and check it out okay also in the second page university database we will take a list box here from the properties we will name this as lst list lst university database okay we can run this and check it out in the page two the list box is here in the page one is when it is we prepared everything now i will speed up the process to align this text box and labels and to name it accordingly now everything is ready now we can run this and check it out see here is student id first name surname address gender mobile and email for the students parents detail is here and we can select the degree and the semester one or two so semester details and the course details from the particular degree course code faculty and other details and here we can select yes and no if it is a com student or else overseas student accommodation exchange program or scholarship we can select yes or no here is the command button to add print result and exit and other things here we will get the calendar and we can select the subjects according to the degree if we select a degree for that particular degree which courses are included in that those will be in the drop down under the course then for the particular course only the subjects will be here for each drop downs we can select different subjects for each subjects we can type the result here when we click the result button we will get the result here okay we will work on this we will select this gender combo box cbo gender in the properties from the text we will take a default text as we did earlier make the selection this will be default for this combo box in the text select a degree for this combo box select the semester for this one select a horse also for these combo boxes this is combo box home student in the drop down yes and no will be there by default there will be no same like for this all five by default no i will speed up this we will go for the bb editor First, we will write a code for the exit command button. Just we will double click this. When we click the exit command button, there should be a message box to exit the user form. The click event is created here in the ABB editor. So we will write a message box within if statement. If message box, are you sure you want to exit? The question will be there then comma bb question the question symbol and bb yes no buttons will be there comma then we can put the title as exit confirmation if we click the no button from the message box then exit sub procedure 
if you click the yes only the exit command button is going to work if you click no then exit this procedure if you click yes then unload me compile this and serve this now we can run this and suck it out we'll click the exit button there's a message box as you show you want to exit if click no it will not exit that we will click yes the juice of form will be exit okay the second one we will cover the print command button double click this the click even for the command print is created here we can set the print setup or else the page setup so we will get the page setup here application dot dialogs open print the excel built-in dialog boxes we can select from here so excel dialog we will take the page setup so using so method we can show the page setup dialog box or else we can take the printer setup also if we take the page setup we can make the settings and we can print this workbook dot seats what is the seat we are going to print the seat is database so we will copy this dot print out we are going to print this database seat space how many copies we are going to take copies colon equal one one copy then page setup will appear we can print this workbook right okay now we will move to the use of form the next one we will work for the reset command button which is here double click this the reset click event is created here in the user form there we have text box and combo boxes here to fill the details so here we will declare two variables dim txt comma cbo txt for the text boxes cbo for the combo boxes and here using the for statement for each txt in multi page one page one the page one is on the top of the multi page one from the page one all text boxes so dot controls enter if type of txt ms forms dot text box then enter tab here we will make the old text boxes empty txt dot text is equal to empty and if close the for statement next txt all the text boxes will be empty now we can check this we will run this and check it out is the text box we can type something here also we can type something now we will reset this this will be empty when we click the reset button the text boxes will be empty now we will exit this also for the combo boxes we have to make them empty so we will copy this and paste it here here cbo here also cbo here combo box Here also CBO. Here also CBO. Now we can check this one as well. In the combo box, we will write something. Okay, here also. In the combo box also. Right now we will click the reset button. Everything will be empty. Now we click the reset button. The default text is also cleared so we have to make them remain there so what we are going to do exit from here in the editor window we have to get back the old combo boxes 
which are default you know, copy this and paste it here see this one is in the frame number five and this is in the frame seven frame seven is in the top of frame five multi page one dot page one dot frame five dot frame seven dot under this control all combo box will be no after clearing the old combo boxes under this control all combo boxes will be filled by no also combo box gender dot text this will be this has to be as default right so make a selection cbo degree dot text is equal to select a degree cbo semester dot text is equal to select select the semester and finally cbo course dot text is equal to select a course and here in this frame frame number three in this combo box this is combo box month and this is combo box year by default we will get the current month and current year here so when we clear the old combo boxes it will be cleared so so we have to keep them remain so what we are going to do here after this we will declare variables m comma y m for the month and y for the year and here we will assign to the m cbo month dot text and for the year y cbo year dot text okay we assign the month and year after clear all combo boxes from here those will be empties we are going to take them back so we will assign this m to cbo month again okay now we will assign this y to cbo year now everything fine now we will move to use of home here the next what we are going to do if we are going to update another semester details for the same student id when we update the student result for the semester one only we will update this parents details from the second semester we don't need to type this again so if the student id is already exist when we type this student id these details has to be updated automatically what so what we will do double click this student id the student id change it will, will be created so here we will declare a variable dim row number as long so we have to find from the database which row number has the uh, same student id details we will use a for loop here for row number is equal to one to worksheets worksheet dot range a1 dot current region dot draws dot hound so i will copy this one under this we will use the if function if this worksheets dot cells here are the row number comma the column number is one the one column number it is contain the student id i will show this here in the excel workbook here you can see student id first name so name the details are there there are is 50 columns you can see there is 50 columns these 50 columns are from the user form here you can see student id first name these things are in order 
frame number one is first, then frame, frame number four is the second, then frame number two, then frame number seven details, then frame number three details, which is month and year, then finally frame number six details. So totally 50 columns are here. That's what the column number one is the student ID. If this is equal to txt student id not text then now we will copy this and we will paste this here after this in the tab we will paste this six more time here this details will be assigned to txt parent or guidance dot text you can see here parents details are here so i will speed up them based on that the parent or guardian from the worksheet it is in the column number eight the another one is column number nine 10 11 12 13 14 and 15. this detail will be assigned to here when we type this student id which is already exist the details will be automatically there now here exit 4 after finding this details exit 4 enter tab end if here closing the post statement now we can check this out you can see here few details are here now we can check this stand id 255004 run this Two double five zero zero four. The details for that it is updated automatically here. Okay, now we will use the reset button. It is reset. Write some other ID one two three. There is no details for this student ID, so we will reset this and exit from here. The next one we will work for user form. The user form click and is created here. From the procedure, we will select initialize. So we will remove this click event. User form initializes here. We will declare a few variables after the option explicit. Apply the date as date. This month, comma this year as string. I as integer. We are going to create a calendar. So for the calendar create cal as boolean. For the use of form initialize. First of all, application dot enable events will make this false. First, we will start the use of form with the today's date. The today current date will be there in the date text box. Now we will assign to this declared variable. The date will be assigned by date. That is the current date. Then this month will be assigned by format of date, comma, format as the month same as the this year will be assigned by format date comma the format as the format this is the expression this format as year the date now from this based on this here in this combo box here we will take the month and here we will take the year then we will use an for loop here for the i i is declared in the public so i is as in i as integer i is equal to 1 to 12 so there are 12 months for that one 1 to 12 the combo box cbo month dot add item we are adding the 12 months the format as date serial 
year as date, month as date, and this date. The format will be as month. This will be in the combo box month. Enter, shift tab, next, enter. Then by default, the current month has to be in the combo box. So using list index method, in the combo box, the current month will be in the combo box. Same like we will take the year in the next combo box. Okay, this is the one. 4i is equal to minus 20 to 50. It means we are taking from current year to 20 years previous years also. So from current years to 50 years back also. So it will be around current years 2023. It will from 20, 2000. 3 to 2072. Those years will be in the drop down. Means if the i is equal to 1, i is equal to 1 means the current year 2023. The date is the expression and format as year. The current year will be there. Else for the line continuation and writing in the next line, the years will be in the drop down list of the combo box. After that, the current year will be by default in the combo box using the list index method. 21, it means minus 20, then plus 1, 21, that is the current year. Right? Now we got the month and year in the combo boxes. You can see the current month, May, current year 2023. We'll make this application enable means is equal to rule before that the variable create cal create calendar we will make this rule we are going to create a procedure for the calendar the calendar procedure we will call here we will call the procedure i will name that as add calendar so I am calling the procedure here, add calendar, at the moment I will make this as comment, after creating the procedure for the calendar I will uncomment this. Now for the combo boxes we will add the items to the combo box here, for the gender one, cbo gender dot add item, first of all make the selection this is by default right then we'll copy this male enter we'll paste this female right for the next combo box degree we'll paste this here it is degree for the degree we will add here select a degree that is by default. Then we will copy these. The first degree, Bachelor of Art. Then I will add few degrees here quickly. Right. Now I will delete these. And I will cut this. I will write this under with statement. With CBO degree. This everything under this with statement. And the shift tab. Here end with. Right. These degrees will be in the drop down. In the combo box degree. Other one is the semesters. So we can add uh, 1 to 12. So we can add under this. 12 semesters we can add in the drop down. CBO semester dot add item i other one we will add here we will add for the form student overseas student accommodation scholarship those things those things uh, yes and no has to be in the drop down so first one is home student overseas student Accommodation, exchange program, and scholarship. So here, CBO home student dot add item. Yes, and we will copy this. 
here no another one cbo overseas student dot add item yes and we will copy this and here no like this i will write remaining three quickly now we will get the database in the list box which is in the page two so multi page one dot value is equal to zero enter the list box we named as lst university database dot column count is equal to the how many columns are there 50 column university data base right we'll copy this now we will add the row source university lst university database dot row source row source from the seat database within double course database is the seat name dollar sign a dollar sign one from a1 hold on a x 10 double course close the resource is this one from a1 to a x la the last column right now we will compile this where's that row source right now correct we'll compile this check it out from the page to the old details added into this list box from the database worksheet it is working now we can see the combo boxes yes no added here here in the degree the degrees added here the gender male and female added here the semester 1 to 12 added here right also the months are here the current month is by default also the years are here from 2002 to 72 the current year is by default okay now we'll exit from here jumping to the coding window here we will create a procedure private sub procedure add calendar which can be called into the use of form initialize enter this is the full coding to create a calendar you can see the routine that actually builds the calendar each time this will be created each time so we are create setting the create calendar as drew that boolean then we are setting this focus to the today's date function the date here for i is equal to 1 to 42 because the 42 command buttons we created there for each day this lines for the month and this is for the year and this one we are setting the colors white color and gray color this one i will explain in an another video detailly now i will move to the next one now we will copy this i will paste it here i will call this under the use of form initialize this is use of form initialize i will call this now we will move to the use of form here we will name each command button here we will name this each command button uh, from d1 to d42 so in the name we can name this d1 the next one d2 likewise i will speed up this right everything done now i will double click this d1 command button for the day one the d1 click unit is created here in the txt date dot text in the, the d1 dot control tip text will be assigned to the date text box okay we'll check this out here 
you can see the May month 2023 is the current year and month. The current month details are updated here. You can see the current month dates are in white color. In the gray color, the previous and next month dates are there. The calendar is ready now. Today is May 26th. Same like uh, the D1 click event. Here D1 click event is created like this. All 42 click events we have to create. I will speed up this process. Okay, you can see for all 42 button from D1 to D42, the control tip text is assigned to the date text boxes. Right, this is fine now. We'll compile this and serve this. Now we will check this out, run this one. You can see when we click a date from here, that date will be assigned here. That's why the control tip text we assign to the text box date. Now we will click this with date 25th, 26th, that is here. We'll click the 10th date. So according to that, from the date, we can click that date. So based on the need, the date will be printed here. Right, reset this and we will exit from here. Our next process is we are going to double click this degree text box, CBO degree. When we select a degree from this combo box, what are the courses contains from this degree? The courses will be under this combo box drop down. When we change the degree, the particular respective courses has to be under this drop down. So we will double click this. The change is created for this CBO degree. Yes. Add the items to the CBO course combo box using with statement under the with statement we can add this add the items here we are going to use the select case branching method so select case our select case is the CBO degree based on the selection from the degree the courses we are going to add enter tab our first case is what's the degree we are going to select from the degree combo box Bachelor of Art. If we select this degree, what are the courses under that? Those will be added. And dot add item space. Let's take a course name fashion design. And one more add item. Fashion design 2. We can add what are the courses under this degree. Okay. Enter. Save tab. Another case, if we select another degree from the degree combo box, let's take Bachelor of Science, enter, tab, add item, we can add the courses under this. I will add all courses under the Bachelor of Science. For the next cases, I will speed up this. Currently, we have one, two, three, four, five degree program under those degree programs. What are the courses there? Those courses are added here. We can add more degree and courses as per our recommend. Before this, we have to put CBO course dot clear. It means if we select different degrees, then previous courses from this course drop down, those has to be cleared. The, the new courses from the new degree, those has to be come to the drop down list. That's why CBO course dot clear we have to put here, right? Now the CBO degree change event is done. We'll move to the next one. Next one is for the CBO course change event. When we select a degree, then we can select the course. Then when we select a course from the course combo box, there are uh, multiple courses. So here, when we select a course, then for the particular course, these details has to be filled automatically. For each courses, these six details are different. So we will add this in the course change event. Also, when we select a course, these eight 
combo boxes we are going to select different subjects different modules for each courses the subjects will be differ right also in the each combo box module combo box we can put different multiple subjects as well so now we will double click this course the cbo course change event is created here if we select a course which is fashion design in the txt course if cbo course dot text is equal a course name fashion design then enter tab here those six details has to be updated automatically the course code faculty dean program lead which buildings those six things so txt course code not text this will be one of the detail i will speed up to write this okay the course code is fashion design fdn001 then txt faculty will be updated as this dean program lead course tutor building these details will be updated automatically if we select the fashion design course likewise there are multiple courses if we select each courses these details has to be updated automatically so i will speed up to write this and i will show it to you okay you can see this is under cbo course change event if you select the fashion design course these things will be updated automatically this is another course fashion design 2 and civil engineering chemical engineering also you can see another courses here if we select each one of courses each items are different right if else if else if and the else if finally end if right also we have we have to write under this cbo course change event when we select the course this will be updated also here in the drop down also the subject has to be come so here in the cbo course change event under that here see this is module one you can see cbo module one another one cbo module two likewise we have eight module so we will work for the module number one we will command that enter same as earlier we will use the clear cbo module one dot clear it means when we select the different courses the module combo boxes has to be cleared and has to be updated according to the course changes here also we are going to use the select case branching method like this cbo degree change enter with cbo module one enter tab select case cbo course enter tab here if the case is fashion design enter tab we will add the items add the items okay the, we are going to add the subjects if we select the fashion design course from the course combo box then we will add these subjects add item okay we will write subject name one okay we will add another subject subject two like this we can add two or three subjects if it is elective subject we can select one subject from that if it is a compulsory subject we can add only one subject save tab if the another case let's copy this the another course is fashion design 2 enter tab we can add item we'll copy this we'll paste it here let's say subject 3 and subject 4 right likewise for each courses we can add subjects 
this is only in the module one not in there we have another more seven modules so i will speed up this also you can see this is under the cbo course change event for the module one see if we select a fashion design course this subject will be added in the module one if you select fashion design 2 this subject civil engineering these subjects likewise for each courses the subjects will be added into the module 1 likewise there we have eight module combo boxes so likewise i will copy and paste this seven more times and for each courses the subjects only going to be differ so i will copy and paste this and i will change the subjects only accordingly i will speed up this okay now we will see this this is for the module one same as this is for the module two you can see the subjects only changing module three four five six seven okay eight in the end after all cases ended we will end with the end select we start with the select case then we will end with the end select we start the with statement to add the items so we will close the with statement by end with okay right now we will compile this okay no issue found next we will jump to here these are the scores uh, for each subject we are going to type the score the result you have to write only the numbers between 0 to 100 okay for those things we can't write any strings here for those for that one we will double click this the txt score change event is created but we need from the procedure we will select the exit we will remove this change event the score exit event when we type the score and when we exit from the text box if it is not integer then there has to be a message for that one we will write using if statement if not is numeric the expression as txt score one for the score one text box dot value then if this is not a numeric value then enter then enter txt score one dot text will be empty we will make that empty and we will send a message only numbers are allowed if we type instead of numbers the message will like be there then we will get the cursor to that text box txt score one dot set focus right enter shift f end if right now we will check this out on this okay now we will select a course from here master of art Okay, so last semester two, we'll select the course, course number one. Okay, we can select Master of Science, select the semester. We select the course transport engineering, the transport engineering course details updated here. Now, the subjects will be from the transport engineering course will be here, subject 29. We can select a subject from this module. If this is an elective subject, okay, we can select. The same subjects names are there. That's why I copy and paste it. That's right. Now for the text txt score one, I will type the score 52. I will exit from that. No message. Now I will type and non integer in the score one when we exit from that 
it will be empty and the message box will be there only numbers are allowed okay now we can type the numbers now we will exit from this here is the score one exit sub procedure likewise for the all other score text boxes score text box one to eight the exit procedure we will create i will speed up this okay now it is created for the score one two three four five six seven and eight for the all text score txt score text boxes it is created when we exit from that if it is non-numeric then there will be message right now we will move to the next one from the user form we will work for the result command button double click this the click event is created for the result command button we will declare two variables dim unit comma unit total as integer right this other variable now here we will use an if function if txt score one dot text is equal to mt or txt score one dot text is greater than hundred or txt score one dot text less than zero empty greater than 100 less than zero whatever the result we are entering here then txt score one dot text this will be zero right likewise for another eight score text boxes i will write this quickly right this is for score one two three four five six seven eight here also i am changing the numbers here also i am changing the numbers here also one to eight so for all score text boxes if we type instead of zero to contract or else empty then when we click the result button those score text boxes will be changed to zero so we have to write the correct score of the student now we had to get the total result for that we will get the txt score one dot text we will convert this to integer we will convert this result to integer and we will assign this to a variable you need zero that's what we defined likewise we will assign this to this all eight scores score one to eight to this variable quickly okay the score two is assigned to this one scores three is assigned to unit two likewise all scores converted to integer and assigned to this variable now we will get the old result this is 0, 1, unit 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay. This sort total will be assigned to the variable unit total. Right. We will get this total to the text box. We will convert this unit total to integer. So, integer unit total. This will be assigned to the text box txt total score now what we have to do now we get the old results here now we have to get the ranking according to the total score now we will copy this unit total here we will use an if statement if unit total is greater than there are how many subjects seven eight modules so total result can be 800 so we will take if it is more than 700 then enter tab that is first class then we will assign the first class to txt ranking 
dot text is equal to first class enter shift tab else if we will do now i will copy this yeah here greater than equal here also greater than equal 600 then second upper right likewise i will copy this and paste it here this one else if greater than 500 This is second lower, right? If this is greater than 400, third class, okay, tomb here. If this is greater than 300, just general pass. Then finally, if this is less than 300, fail. We can assign the ranking here. Finally, end if. Also, in the next to the ranking text box, the date text box is there. For the txt date text box, we will assign the current date, format date. Now done, we will compile this VB project and serve this and we will run this. Uh, now we will type the results here. Type more than 100 minus result 0 and the actual result between 0 to 100. Here we will type a non integer when we escape from that there is a message only numbers are allowed okay then we have to type the correct result okay done now we will click the result command button we will see this one these first three subjects will be zero right other totals are here this is less than 300 so fail and the current date today is the 26th may the date is updated right this is working good we like see this now the next one is we are going to work for another three command buttons from here the next one is for the add new we will double click this the click in this created for the add new command button we are going to add the next new record in the excel sheet here so we have to declare a variable and we have to set the variable to this range then here we will declare a variable next record as range enter we will set that variable next record is equal from the from the seeds database dot range 8 10 dot end open print excel up dot offset one row and in the same color enter before working on this add new we have to write a statement to get the message box before clicking the add new button we have to get the result to get the result we have to click the result command button after getting the result in the result text box only we have to click the add new button so in the if statement txt total score dot text is equal to md then message box as click the result button before add new details right enter 
if the total result is not there then the add new button will not work so before that we have to click the result command button after this message box we have to put an another function copy this one and we'll paste this and exit sub the message box will appear then only the procedure will be exit if the total score is not there right now we will work for the add new command button now the txt student id dot text will be assigned to next record dot offset in the same row comma in the same column dot value right likewise we'll copy this in the next column offset column one the next one is what txt student id then the next one is the first name i will show it dot text this one will be assigned here in the worksheet then the first name will be assigned in the next column in the same row i'll show it to you this will be here this will be here then the show name will be in the next column okay right you can see first student id first name show name likewise when we after we typing the details here when we click the add new command button it will be updated now i will move to here likewise there are how many columns there are 50 columns so we have to write these 50 lines so i will speed up this and i will show it to you right you can see student id is here first name will be updated to here like this all details you can see here it will be updated and we add the new details will come down here then we will write this lst OSCT database dot column count is equal to 50 enter lst university database dot draw source this one from a1 to ax and 48526 after added these details we had to get a message box Let's add it right we have to confirm that the details are added so message box will be appear after adding these details then this workbook dot serve we have to serve that after adding these details after this uh, procedure line we will put a statement if seeds database dot range a1048576 dot end excel up if this range is equal to txt student id dot text then exit sub here is one course right here uh, if you are adding a new student id this is already added which is this one if we click the add new button again this can't to be added again because the data is added already it means we are clicking the add new button again so if this one is equal to in the text box this will be not added the previous student id has to be different from the new student id we are going to add it is to avoid the duplication of data entry this is done okay now we will move to the data base right okay you compile this 
that is fine now we will move to the next one from here the next one is for the view command button we will double click this the click event is created here we will declare two variable r comma r search as long we will assign to r search r search is equal to worksheets database dot range a1 dot current region dot rows dot count enter here we will use the for statement for r is equal 1 to r search enter tab here we have to put the statement if the result is not matched then we will get the message box result not found using the statement here we will copy this worksheets database dot cells the row number as r comma the column number is one for the student id from the column number one if this is not equal to the txt student id dot text and we'll copy this again here this is from the 17th column the 17th column cast the semester so semester is not equal to the txt semester dot text for the line continuation space underscore enter tab here we will write r is equal r search it means until the last populated row it will search if it is not there uh, finally it will give you the message box that's why r is equal to r search then enter here if the data is not there then message box will be data not found enter then we will set this txt student id dot text is equal to empty then the txt semester dot text here yeah, semester this is cbo semester copy the cbo semester dot text this one we will assign a semester that should be default then we will set the cursor to the student id text box so we will copy this and set focus right save tap here end if then end a couple of times if the result not found then message box will be there when we search for the view we have we are going to search by entering the student id and the semester both we have to enter if you didn't type the correct student id and the correct semester then data will not be found now we will go for the what we are going to view now we will copy this and paste it here here this one is equal this one is equal right now we can remove this one from the column one text student id from the 17th column semester both are equal here and so both should be correct now i am copying this one we will assign this to this is from the worksheet we will assign this to which one we will copy this one oh 
for the student ID. Okay, now we'll copy this. And uh, this is for the column number two. I'm changing this column number. This will be assigned to txt first name dot text, right? Likewise, how many columns are there? 50 columns. We have to view the whole details. So I will speed up this. Okay, right. Now you can see student ID, first name, show name, the whole 50 details are there. And the column numbers we have to change from 1 to 50. Right. Finally, after this, exit for. After finding this, we can exit from the for loop and uh, shift tab end if. We are closing the if statement, which is started here. This one. Then we will close the for loop, which is started here. next r right now we will compile this no issues found okay right now we will check this out we can see the second page university database this is from the worksheet now we will search for the 255004 and the semester the semester from 17th column which is semester 4 here right so now you will select that 255004 255004 this data is updated automatically because the data is already there now we will select the semester from here semester 4 now we can view this see we can view all details student details parent details course details uh, this is for the overseas student and the scholarship program this was updated uh, on 25th yesterday uh, the subject and results are here now we can clear the view by reset button okay now we will write another the same student id two double five zero zero four we'll select and some other semester number we will search this view this data not found right now we will exit from this finally one more thing we have to do let the last thing update if there is anything we have update except the student id and the semester we can update anything double click this the command button for the update click command is created here first of all when we click the update button the confirmation message box has to be there then in the if statement we will type a message box are you sure you want to update comma with the bb question symbol comma bb just no buttons comma then the title as update confirmation right if we click the no button from the message box then exit the sub procedure if we click the yes button only we are going to update here we will declare 50 different variables as string for each columns each column updates so dim c1 c2 c3 from c1 to c5 we will declare variable as string i will speed up to write this okay you can see these variables here after this message box when we, when we update this one if the semester and the student id in case empty we can't update this the semester and the student id has to be there so 
we will put an statement if txt student id dot text is equal to mt and cbo semester dot text is equal to mt then exit the sub procedure okay so both student id and the semester has to be there now we will move to the update procedure now i will copy this one we will assign this txt student id dot text the way to the variable c1 using the for loop we are going to find the student id from the database for that we will declare a variable dim update rows comma the r search and as long we will assign to the variable r search is equal from the worksheets database dot range a1 dot current region dot rows dot count the double course right now we will use the for statement for update rows is equal one to our search enter tab we are going to update based on the student id and the semester okay we are going to search the student id id and the semester from the data base if that is matching then th that particular row is going to be updated so we will use the if statement here we will copy this one we will paste it here if student id dot text this is equal to the we will copy this one this is work right spell mistake works in our database dot cells the row number is update rows comma the column number is one and we'll copy this and i will paste this here this is the column number 17 after this underscore enter tab this is for the line continuation then enter right it from the column number student id is matching sound in number the semester is matching if both match then the update will happen right enter here we will assign the student id to the c1 variable now after this tab here we will assign the c1 to this one we'll copy this And we will paste this here. Now the C1 is assigned there. It means it is updated. Student ID is updated. Now here we will assign to the variable C2. That is C2 first name dot text. Then C2 will be assigned to this one we'll copy this one and we'll paste this here this is for the column number two right the first name we assign to the variable c2 then c2 we are assigning here in the worksheet database the update rows and the column is second column that is they are assigned the first name Likewise, there are 50 columns. We have to write it for the 50 columns. So I will speed up this and I will show it to you. Okay, you can see. 
here I am changing the each column numbers 1, 2, 3 and here I am changing this variable C1 to 50 here also I am changing and here I am changing the column names the text box and combo boxes right from 1 to 50 right after finding the update rows, we will exit this for statement, enter tab, we will close the if statement as well, enter zip tab, let me check the for statement line is we are, here's the if statement line, right, here. Yeah. So we we will click here and shift tab, right? Enter shift tab. Here is the post statement line. Next update rows. Now we can clear these empty lines. Now we will compile this. No issues found, and we will serve this. Okay. Now we will run this. Okay. We have to view first before updating any things. Okay, two double five zero zero four, and the semester is fourth semester. Okay, view. Okay, anything we can update here. This is by default from the change event. This also we can't change. We can change this from the semester one. This one we can't change. Okay, now we can change any details, student details or the subject details. Okay, we will change this. Mark, Mark Anthony. Okay, now we will update this. Are you sure you want to update? If no, it will not be updated. If we click yes, it will be updated okay we will we can see from the university database here this one this is changed to mark anthony right also now we can reset this if you want we will update it again yes there are 50 columns that is loading okay this change to the correct one right now we can reset this Okay, we will exit this. One more small things at last. For this exit button, we will give a back color for the differentiation. Okay, shall we click? Give this blue color, right? Good. Okay, we will right click the use of form name and we will insert a module. Here we'll write a sub procedure so form under that the use of home name is FRM student management system dot so using the so method we can show the use of form okay now we will jump to the Excel file from the customize quick access toolbar from more commands from the right side we can select our workbook name from left side we can choose the command macros under that the so form sub procedure is here we can add this just add that from modify we can give any icon we will give this icon ok here click ok right now we can open the use of home by clicking this icon which is in the customized ribbon bar so home ok we can do anything now we will add a new details to double five zero zero six here first name k here Name so banan address 105 means treat 
mail right also we can select from drop down okay next the mobile number whatever it is email mesobanan email one two three at gmail.com right then fair and details fair and father first name b so name k address the means same address work phone let's say not applicable mobile okay we'll put another number email bk123 at email.com okay to confirm email we can write or else copy and paste we can select the degree master of science semester one if you if you are selecting another semester it means the semester one is updated automatically then this fair and details will be updated automatically so this is the first semester result we are going to update we will select a course highway engineering the course details here i'm a home student from the country okay we can take any other different dates let's take 17th may okay we can select the subjects from drop down okay now we will type the score before add the new details now we will click the result command button to get the total result and the ranking right 575 second lower the current date is updated or else we can select any different details 15th may now we will click the add new button right the data is added the message is here added message now we can see that from the university database see the new details is added second lower right now it is added if we click the add button again it will not be added we can click that it but it will not be added because the last student id is the same that's why it is not added okay now we can reset this it will be empty if the old data added from the old students from that particular course after that we can exit from this now i will close this we can open this new song from the excel Thank you for watching.